Hey, how's it going? This is Brian Gordon with uh, Grow Food San Antonio. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, pest control. We're going to be reviewing how to identify pests, various homemade mixtures that you can use, and also using permaculture to create balance. So what we have here is a brassica, um, a, a collard green that has been just annihilated by a pest here. And so first things to just kind of start doing is examine possibly the bites that are on it. Um, different pests will have different bites. Um, also just looking around for the pest itself. So right there we actually have what the pest is. And this little worm will reproduce very quickly and they can wipe out um, large populations of things like brassicas. So one is to identify what the pest is, maybe take pictures of it, um, look online, see if you can find the name, and then um, also try to understand what plants it's going for. A certain pest, pest will only go towards certain plants. So um, the next thing that you want to try to do is get that identification um, and be able to look for possible remedies that are already online. So here's another plant in the brassica family that actually has some of the same pest on it. Um, we have some of the worms, but we also have a couple other fellas. We have snails here that have also been working on these plants over here too. One of the easiest ways to kind of do it is before the problem gets bad is to remove the pest yourself. By hand, you can either dip them into a container of soap, or you can smash them, but reducing their population as soon as you can will allow uh, prevent them from breeding and potentially uh, gaining more momentum and destroying more crops. Just using a basic soap and water solution sprayed onto the plants can also sometimes help. It changes the exterior of the plant to where it's not as um, palatable for a lot of um, pests that'll be on there. Next item would be BT, which is just a ba bacteria. Um, it's a naturally occurring bacteria and it can be used to kill um, things like these caterpillars here. Uh, there's also neem oil solutions, which is a fungicide. This comes from the neem plant, and you would mix two ounces of neem or less with one gallon of water. Other items can be sometimes like pre uh, pepper and garlic mixtures. That can be one tablespoon of red pepper flakes, a whole onion or garlic, one teaspoon of soap mixed in with one gallon of water. You blend it all together and let it set for 24 hours and you can spray that onto your plants. Um, other items would be like a chili mix. That's three and a half ounces of dried chili with two and a half gallons of boiled water. Boil for five minutes. Add a half gallon of cold water, two drops of soap, and then test it on the plants after it's cooled down and see how the plants work with some of that. Another solution is making various traps. So this is a simple one that just uses uh, cooking oil on the, out, on the inside edge of this and then you fill it with um, yeast and water or old beer and that'll allow bugs to enter through um, sensing that smell. Um, not be able to climb back up and then get stuck in there. So snails and things like cockroaches and things like that can sometimes fall into there. These can be emptied out and then uh, more beer can be added. One of the last solutions can sometimes be using a holistic approach or permaculture techniques. Basically um, various ways that would naturally get rid of pests and keep that balance within order. Um, one of the easiest ways is sometimes adding chickens or ducks, animal husbandry, into the garden space. 
They'll also um, benefit in other ways by producing waste and kind of tilling the soil. But also they'll eat bugs that kind of go around and um, will damage the garden eventually. Another thing is beneficial plants. So right here we have uh, lemongrass. Things like mints. Lemon eucalyptus. So using these herbs sometimes can really distract the smell of um, bugs that they would use to kind of find what they're going for. The scents will kind of uptake into the air and uh, often kind of confuse them. One last thing when working with squashes or things like that is to keep in mind crop rotation. So crop rotation really involves um, things like whenever squashes will have a squash vine burrow or that comes in and will um, eat from the vine and destroy the vine by keeping this crop at a different location next season um, allows that um, burrower not to lay its eggs in the same spot and then wake back up and have the same plant there to chew on. Um, certain bugs will uh, lay eggs in an area and kind of uh, take over that area for the next season. Um, so those are things to keep in mind. Another last part is plant within season. So a lot of these cabbages and brassicas are actually just getting hit really bad. Things like aphids and stuff like that will start to move in as we go from the cool season of planting some of the cool season crops um, like these brassicas and into a season where it starts to get warmer that allows a lot more pests to come in and we want to try to deal with plants that can actually tolerate some of those kinds of pests a little bit better. So plant within season. One of the first things you want to do is try to identify the pest and we're not talking about the kind of pest I want to try to buy your home. We're talking about the kind of pest in the garden. So basically just looking on the plant, looking at the bites and trying to identify maybe by its bite what can be there. But also sometimes just looking right in there. So right there we got a large caterpillar here. We got snails that are on here that can be doing some damage. And we have a lot of these guys. So take a picture of them, look them up on the internet, try to do some research, you know, um, identify what plant that they're on. They'll sometimes just stick to one variety of plant. Um, those can help uh, specialize things. Certain um, bugs will only harm tomato plants and things like that. So sometimes you don't need to do all the research to understand what to do. deal with all the pests. Just deal with the pest as they come um, with the plants that you are working with for that season so you don't get overwhelmed. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, that'll get you access to updates whenever I post new videos. And uh, make sure to always kind of try to um, look around and do other research and try to share your knowledge with other people so that we can all grow together. Thanks. Bye.